Greetings. Now let us talk about gastroesophageal reflux disease, G-E-R-D. Uh, these are my acknowledgments. And today's learning objectives including include the following. We want to distinguish between pathologies that impact the esophagus with a special reference to GERD, identify different esophageal pathologies, and recognize the symptoms associated with each pathology. What is gastroesophageal reflux disease? It happens when the acid from the stomach flows back into the esophagus and causes symptoms and damage. Uh, that is gastroesophageal reflux disease. So although we do have a, a little bit of reflux in almost everybody, when the reflux becomes uh, severe, acid from the stomach could go up into the lower esophagus. And in that case, one could have symptoms of heartburn, that's a burning sensation that goes up, usually after a big meal. Uh, sometimes if the esophagus is irritated to the point that the peristalsis, that is the muscular contraction from the muscles of the esophagus, interfere with the movement of the food down and the patient feels difficulty swallowing, they could have what is called dysphagia. If the acid causes damage and ulcers, they can have pain on swallowing, otherwise known as odonophagia. Sometimes the esophagus, the reflux could go even higher up into the upper esophagus and then it can irritate the throat and patients may complain of a lump in the throat. It can go into the pharynx or sometimes into the mouth uh, that can cause additional uh, symptoms. Uh, sometimes patients can go to the dentist worrying why their teeth are getting uh, rotten. If the acid that goes up enters into the lung, it can cause irritation and spasm of the airways. Patients may have symptoms of asthma. And uh, if the acid reflux is too much and they aspirate deep into the lungs, it can result in aspiration pneumonia. As the the stomach lining, the esophagus lining, is quite resistant to acid damage, but when the defense mechanism of the esophagus is overtaken by the acid coming up from the stomach, it can result in damage, otherwise disease. And what type of damage can happen when there is acid reflux? So you can find out when you do an upper endoscopy. Now here, we reach to the lower end of the esophagus. You can see the squamous lining and the squamous culmar junction. Uh, this is the gastroesophageal junction. This is the opening. And uh, right now, we are not seeing any damage, but the patient has heartburn. So. This patient could have what is called non-erosive reflux disease. That means the lining looks good and there is no damage to the esophagus. And uh, in those cases, you could confirm the diagnosis of acid reflux by taking a biopsy and showing changes 
in the squamous lining under a microscope. That's what the pathologist will tell you if you take biopsies from the esophagus in a patient with heartburn. Uh, there are certain changes that will make them suspicious for acid reflux. It's not common to have biopsy changes and uh, you want to confirm the diagnosis of gastroesophageal reflux disease. So you want to check whether there is acid reflux up into the esophagus. And you can't do that with endoscopy, but you could do that by measuring the acid in the esophagus with a special pH study. Uh, this is where you put a, leave a probe uh, into the esophagus uh, during endoscopy, and the patient comes back after 24 hours or 48 hours, depending upon the type of the study. And that probe will send signals about the amount of acid that is coming up into the esophagus over that period of time. And then you measure the total amount of acid exposure and the number of times the acid has come up into the esophagus that is called reflux episodes. This happens if the esophageal lining, the defense mechanism is able to withstand the damage from the acid coming up from the stomach. Sometimes what happens is the esophageal lining the defense mechanisms are not great, and then they break down. The lining breaks down and leads to what is called an erosion. Uh, here is an erosion on endoscopy image. And if the length of the erosion is less than five millimeters, it is very mild grade of acid reflux or reflux esophagitis. So a group of experts uh, met and came up with this uh, classification of reflux esophagitis. They met in Los Angeles. So this is called the Los Angeles classification. And this is grade A reflux esophagitis. If the damage is a little more extensive, and the erosions go beyond five millimeters, as you can see here, this is grade B. LA classification, grade B. And if the damage not only extends up, but if it goes in a circumferential manner, and it is not complete circumference, but a few folds uh, in the circumference, it is grade C, as you can see here. If it goes all around and there is extensive damage, that is grade D LA classification. And here you see there is damage all around. So grade D is severe erosive esophagitis. Grade A is mild erosive esophagitis. And then there is something called non-erosive reflux disease. It's all otherwise known as NERD, N-E-R-D, non-erosive reflux disease. 